Sound is a major part of everyday life. It enables us to communicate, it entertains us, and it also warns us of danger. Some sounds or noises are undesirable. They're irritating. And at high volume and long-term exposure, they can be detrimental to our hearing and our health. I'm Jim Anderson, and today we will explain the subject of sound as it pertains to New York blower fans. Our goal is to provide you with a foundation so you can make the best decisions in the selection and installation of fans. In this video, we will address the terminology used in discussing sound. We will show you a sound testing laboratory. We'll view actual fan tests being conducted and we're going to look at some common examples of fan types and some real installations. To start, let's quickly overview how sound is generated and how we hear it. All operating equipment generates sound as a result of mechanical energy being converted to vibrations in the air. The air molecules vibrate against each other and the sound radiates through the air in waves, like a stone thrown into a still pond. It is in this way that sound travels from the item causing it like a fan, to our ear. And the ear has tremendous sensitivity to these very small fluctuations in air pressure. In order to measure and work with sound, we use specific terms and units of measure. Two very important terms that are often confused are sound pressure and sound power. Sound pressure is a quantity that is environment dependent. It is affected by distance and the absorptive quality of the environment. It can be measured with a microphone. It's what we hear. It's important that you remember that sound pressure is dependent upon the environment. Sound power, on the other hand, is independent of the environment. It cannot be measured directly. Sound power is calculated from sound pressure levels measured in a known environment. It is specific to a particular piece of equipment, and it allows manufacturers to publish ratings in a uniform way. Unfortunately, both sound pressure and sound power are referenced to the same type of generic mathematical scale, which adds to the confusion. The typical scale used for rating industrial fans is the decibel scale. There are other rating systems, such as zones for residential and commercial fans, but our discussion will concentrate on the decibel system. The decibel is a way of presenting the very small pressure and power numbers in a format that is easy for us to work with. The reference for the decibel scale is the sound level the average human ear can detect. You can see that the very small pressure values on the left are represented by more manageable numbers on the decibel scale on the right. With that background, let's go to the New York Blower Lab and get a better understanding of how sound power levels are generated. We're here in New York Blower's Amco Registered Sound Test Facility. With me is Mike, a member of the engineering staff. This is a pretty unusual room, Mike. Can you tell us a little bit about it? Sure, Jim. The equipment housed in this room is used to simulate fan systems. The test chambers we have in here contain pressure taps, temperature probes, and nozzles, which we use to evaluate where in the fan curve a fan is operating while, while we're doing the test. And we're talking some pretty sophisticated stuff. The, uh, all the test data that we acquire is used when we're rating the fan for sound. Wow, now take a look at this. I mean, that's a pretty big piece of equipment there. Yes, it's 13 feet in diameter. Oh. We use such a large chamber so that we can accommodate different fan types and sizes uh, in this facility when we're testing. Okay, now over here in this room, what do we have here? This is a reverberant room with, that we test our products in. It's a known environment with a hard concrete floor, hard brick walls and a hard ceiling. The room is designed so that the sound that is in the room from the product is reflecting off of the, off of the hard surfaces and that enables us to measure the sound levels in a more uniform manner. You know, I, I can hear the reverberation just from our voices. Right. Over here we have a calibrated microphone that is connected to a data acquisition system. The microphone takes uh, the pressure levels that it's measuring here in the air and converts them to an electrical signal which it sends to the control room. Well, you know, what do we say we go on to the control room and see okay. how this all works together? It's right over here. Lead the way. The spectrum analyzer here receives the signal that comes in from the microphone. 
It groups the signal into discrete frequency bands, and the levels of those bands are uploaded to this computer over here. The software on the computer is then used to calculate sound power levels from the pressure levels. Great system. And, and you know, this equipment here looks pretty special. It is. The equipment that we use, the test setup that we use, and all the calculations and methodology that we use must conform to standards developed by AMCA, the Air Movement Control Association. And you know, we also should point out that these standards provide fan manufacturers with the procedures to extrapolate test data to other fan sizes and speeds. They also prescribe uniform methods for presenting the data. And New York Blower's fan sound data is available in printed or software formats. Right. The test setup here today conforms to AMCA Standard 300. Today's setup is Type B, which has a f free inlet and ducted outlet, which is typical for this type of fan equipment. Good point. I got you there. Now, in general, fan sound rating are calculated in the maximum efficiency range for the fan. When the fan is operating at a point outside of this range, then sound rating corrections must be made. These factors are available in the published engineering supplements. Right. Looks like our technicians are ready to run a sound test. Would you like to stick around and see one? Hey, I'd love to do that. To visualize the test better, we provided a simulated sound pressure meter to show actual dB levels measured in the test. In this test, we will demonstrate the effect that fan speed has on sound. Now initially, the fan will operate at 1200 RPM. And notice that the corresponding dB level is 83. Now if we speed the fan up to 1500 RPM, you can hear and see the difference. But notice that the sound intensity seemed to double. So remember, the decibel scale is not linear. Fan sound is generated in four basic ways. Fan air turbulence, which is dependent upon the fan wheel design, system air turbulence, system vibration, and fan components. Because there is a wide variety of different flow, pressure, and gas stream requirements, a variety of different fan designs have been developed. For example, there are three basic centrifugal wheel designs, forward curve, backward incline, and radial. There are also a variety of axial wheel designs, and as you might expect, each also has unique sound characteristics. For example, backwardly inclined fans create the least amount of air turbulence and are therefore the quietest for a given point of operation. Wheels with airfoil shaped blades are the most efficient of that type and hence offer the lowest sound levels. Radio fans create more turbulence and are typically used in material handling or high pressure applications where only radial designs can meet the performance requirements. Generally, radial fans will be noisier at the same volume and pressure. Fans with forward curved wheels operate at much lower speeds and pressures, which results in lower noise levels. However, due to their modest efficiency, forward curved designs may generate more noise than backwardly inclined fans at comparable volumes and pressures. Axial fan designs offer various levels of efficiency. The use of airfoil shaped blades, as with vein axial fans, is a major factor in lower sound levels in these designs. We need to remember that the volume and pressure requirements of the system normally dictate the type of fan used. It then comes down to fan location and installation to meet sound specification limits. But right now Bill is waiting for us in the reverberant room to show us a few different fan conditions that contribute to system sound. What are you going to show us here, Bill? Well, various wheel designs contribute to air turbulence, but another factor is system effects. Here's a fan operating with an open inlet. Air enters the fan smoothly and the fan wheel is loaded uniformly. Now we've modified the inlet condition with an abrupt 90 degree inlet. You can hear the difference. The abrupt inlet is causing the air to separate and become turbulent as it enters the fan. In this example, we've modified the fan with another poor inlet condition. 
a typical blast gain. Again, you can hear the difference. These are just two examples of increased sound levels created by system effects. Conversely, fan sound levels can be reduced with sound enclosures or silencers. Jim, here's a pressure blower with an open inlet. Let's note the sound level. Now, Jim, here's the same fan with a silencer that's mounted on the inlet. Let's take a listen. Okay. Wow, you can really hear the difference. Yes, you sure can, Jim. Silencers are a very economical method of significantly reducing the noise level at the inlet of a fan. Well, that's certainly apparent. So we've seen now that fan selection and mm -hmm. system design can play a role in system noise. But Bill, how about vibration? Mm -hmm. Is that a significant factor? In most installations it is. The mounting of the fan to its base is very critical. The fan should always be mounted to its base, either on concrete or rigid steel, or it can be mounted to a vibration isolation base. And just as important is using flexible connectors at the inlet and the discharge of the fan to reduce the transmission of sound and vibration to the rest of the system. Thanks for pointing that out. Mm -hmm. We've talked about fan and system designs and fan installation issues. It's also important to point out how mechanical components can influence sound and vibration. That's right, Jim. Here we've isolated some of the mechanical components, specifically the drive and the motor. As you can hear, depending upon the type of components and maintenance, sound levels can be significant. They sure can. Loose belts, misalignment, and general motor noise are things to look out for as potential sound generators. It's important to remember that published fan sound power ratings only reflect the sound created by air turbulence within the fan. Mechanical noise, vibration noise, and noise created by system effects are impossible to predict and are not included in the ratings. So in summary, fans should be selected in their most efficient operating range, then installed with proper inlet and outlet conditions to avoid system effect noise. Use solid mounting structures and wherever possible, isolation. Finally, good maintenance will not only reduce noise, but add years of life to the fan. When the sound power for a fan has been determined, the sound pressure for a specific application can be estimated. Let's work through an example together. New York Blower Engineering Supplements list the total sound power for each fan type and size by eight octave bands. Adjustments must be made to the base data to conform to the specific application. Let's assume that the fan is not operating in its maximum efficiency range. A VP over SP correction must be applied, yielding fan sound power. Assuming that the inlet is ducted away from the listening location, a reduction in decibels can be taken, yielding corrected sound power at the fan. A further reduction occurs if the outlet duct is abrupt and concerns the listening location. Reductions are in specific octave bands and relative to the duct diameter. This yields corrected sound power. Next, consider the environment to convert sound power into sound pressure. The sound intensity will vary depending upon the installation and the distance between the fan and the listening location. We must also consider the number of reflecting surfaces, which determines the sound pattern. These are called directivity factors. Combining directivity factors and distance yields this graph. The further the distance and the fewer the reflecting surfaces, the larger the decibel reduction. Let's assume a floor-mounted fan in a large area, 15 feet from the listening location. This gives us the estimated sound pressure for this application. And now, let's take a look at a few examples of some real fan installations. This outdoor installation utilizes an inlet box to feed air to the fan in a confined area. 
The system includes flexible connectors to reduce vibration transmission. The fiberglass ductwork helps to attenuate airflow noise. A wall behind the fan inhibits fan noise from emanating toward the buildings in the background. The fan weather cover attenuates some of the motor and drive noise. This fan installation includes mounting the fan to a concrete base. The flexible connector on the inlet limits vibration transmission to the inlet ductwork. However, the fan itself is connected abruptly to a small plenum mixing recirculated and fresh air. This causes a system effect that may influence the sound level. This fan is located amongst other equipment and ductwork which will accentuate the sound level in the area. In this outdoor installation, the fan, motor, and drive are rigidly mounted to a common steel frame and large concrete base. A factory supplied inlet box minimizes inlet system effect in the tight quarters. The adjacent equipment provides a surface for the sound to reflect off. This indoor installation includes a system effect from two 90 degree elbows right at the fan inlet. The weather cover, partially removed, isolates motor and drive noise. The fan is attached to a solid concrete base. Flexible connectors are used on both the inlet and outlet to reduce noise transmission to the rest of the system. The New York Blower Company hopes that this video has given you a good foundation on the subject of fan sound. As you can see, it's complex and unique to each application. But by following some basic steps, sound levels can be significantly reduced. If sound is critical to your application, contact your New York blower representative to assist you in making the best fan selection.